Welcome to Crypto Kid Podcast. This is Sonny speaking. I have a special guest. He's been future, uh, featured on Forbes, USA Today, and Entrepreneur Magazine, Mr. Ivan, the founder of Sold Out NFTs. So why don't you give us a quick brief introduction about yourself and how you started? Absolutely. So um, I got into crypto in 2016, uh, and my background is investor relationship marketing, mm -hmm. doing um, paid advertising on all socials and also um, native uh, ads for public companies, getting them short-term and long-term investors online. Um, I was responsible, accountable for uh, managing up to $500,000 a month. Um, and then 2021, sold out a collection for an Italian artist of a one of one uh, and that kick-started me getting into selling out NFTs, had my own way of doing things. Um, it did really well. Um, and to this date, um, we're still selling out collections, uh, somewhere around 67% of um, the collections I pick up, uh, they sell out. The rest of them sell at least 40 to 90% uh, of their collections. Amazing. Amazing. Now, I had an inter interesting conversation with my roommate today about NFTs, and he's, he went on this rant about how it's a scam, and these broad apes are a joke, and I'll just, I just want to know your opinion about that. Yeah, so I mean, even on my on my channel on on YouTube, um, I had a I had a I had a entire video about Web three, and then someone under it just wrote um, Web three is trash, um, <laughs> and so I think people have certainly a strong opinion um, about a lot of these new things. And then he was so what what was interesting is that he was excited about Web five. It's like Web3 is trash, but Web5 is really exciting. Um, and and so, so I guess what it comes down to is what what is what's the use of things um, when it comes to NFTs? And then there are bad actors in every industry. So if you think, so sometimes people say, well, not all of them successful. Well, not all of startups are successful. One out of every 20. Uh, startup is successful and then even then 95 percent of them even when they turn into business 95 percent of them in the first five years fail completely fail and all the money from the investors vanishes with them like poof gone <laughs> like so so that's so if you if someone says okay well not all of them are going to be successful yet um if someone says uh, okay well they're volatile it's a well, it is. It's a volatile industry. So crypto and NFT, there. Um, so it has very. Um, it has a high, uh, uh, I guess, not, uh, I guess high percentage of profit, but also like you can go down, um, really bad as well, right? So, the um, so that's just the characteristic of it. Now it's good for some people because they're bored of you know making very small. Um, gains in whatever investment they're making. Um, so let's say, I don't know, say real estate, let's say 10% um, per year, mm -hmm. uh, say stock, right? So uh, those things you can you can have maybe it's more stable um, gains, but it's not as much, right? So so that's that's what what's good about it. For some people, they thrive in a volatile environment because they can control their emotions um, they can they can uh, have massive gains and they don't mind it. Now, um, could some projects uh, make promises and then due to mismanagement or uh, they don't know how to deliver their promises or maybe sometimes these are, these are kids, like they just never done anything like this. You know, they see it like a few million dollars and then they just lose themselves, right? So um, so that's that's possible, right? But um, is it the NFTs that does this? I don't think so. I think it's just the people. So if people are being scammy, sure. Um, but um, the the NFTs itself, it has use cases and it doesn't have to be called NFTs. You can call it digital collectibles, right? Um, so, mm -hmm. and even for, for games and other things, like 
the conversation for crypto and NFTs is just, it was cool when it was hypey. Now it's not about the conversation about what they are, or it's mostly about what they do. Um, it's no one cares what an NFT is anymore. People care about, okay, what can it do for, for my project? What can it do for me? Exactly, exactly. And I completely agree. I appreciate you sharing that because my opinion is like, I was trying to explain to him, yeah, there is there are some NFTs that are a joke. And I, I personally think that the apes are a joke, but the celebrities like Logan Paul, Jake Paul that push it, Everybody thinks like, oh, these guys are in it. My favorite celebrity, what a so and so. So it must be worth something. We're like, no, 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 no. You got to see what actually works, and eventually, what goes up must come down. Exactly. And I'm glad you mentioned projects. So, what are some projects that you have successfully completed, like recycling money and? how to sell NFTs in a bear market with the XRP chain ring. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't name them, but I would tell you, um, I'm happy to tell you everything about, about those projects, but people can, if they want to figure out what the names are, they can go on my website um, mm -hmm. in the case study section, they can see it. But, um, but the, um, we certainly still sell out in the, in the bear market. And in fact, um, just as of now, so, um, at the time of this, it's in almost the end of January uh, 2023. As of just right now, I want to say past two weeks, there's been a bit of a increase in the number of collections that are selling out. Um, and even so, I used to um, say like Ethereum, for example, chain is um, having a very negative market sentiment. Um, and I was just looking like last week, there were three collections sold out. They were, I mean, they were a joke. They, I, I can't even believe they sold out, right? Um, so now could there be a lot of wash trading? Um, could there be a lot of um, inside, uh, tr inside trading uh, possible? I don't know. I haven't like delved deep in to see how they sold out. Um, but what's clear um, from the ones that I've personally been involved with that sold out that they sell out um and yeah if you have any questions about them happy to happy to be very transparent about it i just don't want to name them uh, okay okay yeah um i'm sure they'll come up so the next question though is why do you think it's okay to have paid ads on web3 yeah so that's a that's a, so obviously with my experience, when I came into the Web3, the first thing I thought was, okay, would paid ads work in the Web3 as well? Because I had it in the Web2. I was very successful with it. Um, I was able to have a reach that, um, you know, with $500,000 a month, you can reach a lot of people. Um, and we, we're talking, you know, uh, millions and millions of people. And really nurtured them and asked them to, you know, influence them to do specific things. So naturally, when I came into the Web3, I thought, okay, cool. Can we do that? And turns out the um, top three projects that um, have the highest impressions for promoted um, uh, as a promoted tweet or paid ads, uh, they are either my clients or um, they've been in my incubator, so they learn things from me. Um, and so I certainly am more favorable about paid ads than, than other people just biased about it. But um, I think what I like about it specifically is that it's very transparent. So under a uh, promoted tweet, you'll see it literally reads promoted. Um, and this is in contrary to a lot of influencers out there that they are um, after their own bag and telling people, yes, I'm so excited about this project I'm going to buy, but they don't say, they don't actually disclose, which is actually against like what SEC rules as well. But besides the point, they don't say, hey, um, I got paid this much money to talk about this project. Now, the Web3 folks at this point, they all know it. They can um, they can guess who's who's got paid to talk about what. 
but the web two people coming in, they may not know. So the transparency of paid ads um, is actually a huge benefit uh, to me uh, for the industry, uh, for the founders, because they, you know, they get to reach people they weren't able to reach. They get to reach a specific type of people. You can literally target a specific usernames um, on Twitter um, and then get in front of them and then show showcase your, let's say, trailer of your NFT game, right? So that's that's pretty useful um, for a NFT project coming out. Maybe they don't want to do a billboard, have, you know, 100,000 people look at things when, in fact, like 10 of them going to buy. Um, they want to get in front of a specific type of people and um, showcase their project. So again, pay, uh, paid ads or promoted tweet. That's the second second benefit. It has other benefits, but those are some of the very important ones that I think is good for the industry, and it's also good for the for the founders as well. Okay, okay, and what are what are some differences between a successful NFT? And an NFT that fails. Can you explain that for me? Yeah. So this is this is very interesting. So when I said earlier on, 60, 70, uh, 67% of projects we work with sell out is because my assumption is that people only after selling out, right? But in reality, that's actually not the case. There are projects, for example, coming from let's say Hollywood or let's say big like public companies or uh, let's say um, even like SaaS companies sometimes or there's many, many situations where projects come to us and the point is not to sell out. So a lot of times the, you know, in I would say maybe in 2021 even uh, mostly, everyone wanted to sell out, right? Um, and if you didn't sell out, then you weren't successful. But now, because we are very focused on like, you know, the price point of NFTs, for example, on Ethereum is somewhere around hundred dollars, right? And so so the maybe the uh, primary sales that people were expecting, instead of you know, them being somewhere around average five to ten mil, now somewhere around one to five mil. So it's not necessarily that people just trying to raise, so they hundred percent have to sell out or um, they have to sell out because they just want to make a specific uh, amount of money for themselves, right? So now it comes down to it's like, okay, maybe it's just that you want to even do a freement um, and then you want to upsell that community, um, something else, maybe another NFT. Or maybe you even if you sell out 40% of your NFTs, then you've accomplished what you wanted like literally there's projects we worked with that they sold maybe 80 percent, and they're like that's it we're just going to close the contract we're not going to leave it open forever for people to do this because we accomplished what we wanted to do um and we got the number of people we wanted to we made a bunch of money and that's good like we don't need to wait we're going to start delivering on our promises and then um let's just add value to people what we decided to do so it's the concept, the notion of just selling out is slowly fading away um, as, it, as it appears. Um, it was a lot more important um, now because, well, frankly, because a lot of people cannot sell out. Um, I think as um, now the conversation has changed to, okay, what's really important to you? Is it the community you're building around it? Is it the use case of the NFT? So maybe it's just like a membership NFT, right? So if people have the NFT, they can come and use the NFT for specific app, maybe a specific club, in person, digital, whatever that is. And if they sold 80%, they sold 80%, that's fine. They can do another, another launch, maybe in a few months. Um, there's no need to just make sure 100% sell out. So that's that's really, um, it's a it's a new it's a new paradigm that's that's being uh, I guess created um, very very recently, um, and so people are starting to come up with new definitions for like what's what's success to them. Is it like number of people? Um, is it what kind of people actually joining the project? Is it that the floor price goes up? 
right? So like in the past, a lot of projects that I worked with, when I stopped working with them, uh, they, you know, they do things on their own sometimes and then they just hit zero as floor mm -hmm. price, right? And so, so is that success? Like you made $10 million, you deliver some of your promises and then you hit zero as a floor price. Like, is that successful? I don't know. I think it could be also not successful um, from some point of view. Right. You're right. And then you have to, you, you have to use your due diligence for sure. And not jumping on with the hype for sure. It's, you got to look at it this way for those who are listening. It's a long-term investment in my opinion. And so the main source that people go to, to look up, to do their research is through Twitter is one of them. And what's going on with that? Since like we're in the crypto winter or the the downfall of of NFTs and blockchain technology, how are you handling that? How am I handling what? The downfall with with the NFTs and what the feedback it is on Twitter. So, I mean, it's interesting. So OpenSea, the largest marketplace um, on Ethereum uh, for, I guess, for Ethereum blockchain. I mean, they have other chains too, but predominantly they came in for Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. They have somewhere around, I want to say 1.4 million uh, total amount of wallets. I think as of lately, it has gone down. Uh, it went down to somewhere around, let's say, 500,000 total wallets, total active wallets. And then Reddit came along. So Reddit, me, uh, the social media platform, mm -hmm. they came along and then they added about 3 million. So they did two launches. The first launch, they added about 3 million active wallets. This is very recent, by the way. Um, so this is, we're talking a few months ago. Um, and then they did the second launch, which was, I want to say December um, ish, uh, 2022. Um, and they added at the time I was looking, they added an additional, um, 1.5 million active wallets. In other words, and this is, they all doing it in the name of digital collectibles, not NFTs, which is the same thing, but who knows what they are. Right. Or it's just like same concept, like even Ticketmaster, for example, they use NFTs, um, but who knows they're using NFTs in the back end. Um, so, and that's that's a good thing about it. It's like, you don't even know you're using NFTs, but NFTs is being used as a technology. So going back to your question, so is it actually that we're going down or is it actually that we're going up? Because um, the, the NFT market, the largest NFT marketplace, when it was, you know, 1.3 and then now 500,000, Reddit on its own added more, active wallets than the entire market the entire largest marketplace on earth had um and so so are we actually going down um i don't know i think it's actually it's possible that we're actually going up um what is going down is the sales um so the total volume um partly because people not after buying um you know high dollar um i guess nfts the the average of the sales of NFTs has gone down. I believe the average even on Ethereum was somewhere around thousand bucks in uh, 2021. Um, the at least the first three quarters, um, and uh, no, actually, uh, 2021 all quarters, and then uh, 2022, um, I want to say even qu uh, first quarter, um, and so. That was the average, and then the average obviously went to a hundred. So what seems to be down is that is the sales. Sales has been significantly down. So seventy percent up to you know eighty ninety percent uh, down. So maybe that's what what shows for people to be down. So certainly because of that, a lot of influencers left Twitter, mm -hmm. and that's for the good to be honest. Like that's the the cleansing. We actually want it. So right. um, now, is this uh, is this causing troubles? Um, not really. Like in the past, it was a lot of 
you know, buying followers, mass DM this, um, get like fake followers, do this, fake followers, do that, pump your tweets, pay people to show up on your Twitter space, all that stuff, or like pay um, chatters on your Discord. Now, no one cares, right? So, and it's, we know that they're not as, um, we know that the, the hype is not the, the thing to go for. So you see now people with 5,000, like for example, Trump collection had 5,000 um, followers, despite, you know, Trump having obviously more followers in his, on his socials. Um, so the Trump collection had 5,000 followers and they sold out in about a day. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's a very telling of like the new paradigm again, right? So it's not about the the numbers. It's about actual like real people, genuine people, genuine interactions, um, which is great. Like that's perfect. Like for us, I actually prefer that. I hate like, you know, people having to pay for pumping tweets, just artificial everything. Um, and so there's that. And then just so f for people to get a sense of, you know, the, the evolution, again, sometimes people say NFTs are like completely dead and things like that. So just so people can get an idea on Tezos alone, um, we have uh, just recently, we had Manchester United launch their NFTs, um, McLaurin launched their NFTs, uh, what else? Uh, Audi, uh, Volkswagen, um, Lamborghini just did on actually Ethereum, uh, just since we're talking about cars. Uh, Red Bull on Tezos. Uh, we had Old Navy. We had, um, I mean, uh, Coca Cola. Uh, no, I don't know if it's Coca Cola, but Pepsi for sure. Uh, maybe Coca Cola as well. Uh, let's see. Um, Starbucks. Charm. Which one? Starbucks. Starbucks? Yes, yeah, Starbucks. Um, Charmin to toilet paper. <laughs> um, I mean, like literally, there's so many of these real businesses that they've actually into oh uh Porsche just recently um entered the market uh, obviously Reddit uh Facebook uh as a meta uh so like i mean this list goes on and on so it's actually a lot of large businesses actually entering the market um and i'm talking recent like Lamborghini was December 2022 so it's not much like um you know uh like past past a few months so uh, there's there's actually a influx of real huge businesses coming into the nft um and so so once again the sales is down but the actual um usability the functionality of nfts is actually being even more prominent excellent excellent and i concur with you a hundred percent so like we have a bunch of prominent stuff happening, big companies, multi-billion dollars being invested into this. Now, even though that there's a lot of good and things that make the NFT specials, like what are still some of the problems that NFT has that we need to work out? Okay, so the NFT uh, industry or the technology? The technology. Okay. So, I mean, biggest, biggest thing being, you know, NFTs are at the end of the day, for example, on, um, on, um, well, let's say on open seas servers, mm -hmm. right? So if, if they decide, so there's nothing decentralized about it, right? So it's on, on a, on a server of someone else. Um, so if one day they shut down the servers, then there goes your NFT it's gone. Um, and so, I mean, that's a big problem. Um, there is the, um, I suppose, um, as far as the the actual usability of the NFT itself, um, you know, creating smart um, and how it's it's sitting on a smart contract, that's pretty evolving. That's, that's done pretty well. I mean, there's still, um, I suppose, some chains, um, they have troubles, like, for example, Cardano, um, they have troubles with their smart contracts, not necessarily with NFTs, but they have trouble with their smart contract. Um, Solana just recently got hacked. Um, so uh, there are a lot of hacks that happens for uh, smart contracts that are just being written poorly or just stupid things like, you know, um, founders don't have 
um, their funds on a multi-stake wallet. So things like that happen. But um, the technology itself, just the actual NFT, um, other than how it's being used, um, I guess the technology by which it's being used, the technology itself is just there's it's complete. Like it's 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 uh it's good. Like it it's not it doesn't have any any challenges to my knowledge. Uh, but um, but certainly when it comes to actually using it, that's where um that's where the challenges come. Now, if you say like for example the laws around it, like that's not being evolved. Like we don't know anything about the laws, the IP. Those are very ambiguous. Um, the let's say um, what it looks like in uh, you know in the in the real life for a lot of projects. Like you have the NFT. What can you actually like? What do you own? So do you own the NFT just to display it, or do you own the rights to even use it? Um, a lot of times people don't even have anything on their privacy policy. Can you return an NFT that you bought? Um, is there a refund? Like a lot of things like very unclear, right? If you, I've read the privacy um, and terms and conditions for uh, board apes, for example, obviously one of the blue chip, one of the OJs in the, in the industry, it's one page. Um, so it's not very detailed, right? It's, I mean, it's detailed enough, uh, but there's a lot of things people still don't know. They're like, you know, for example, with Moonbirds, we had a lot of people thought, okay, let's buy just aping on a lot of uh, moonbirds. And then later on, they were like, wait, actually you don't own, um, you don't need to like have it. Like you can, you can just use the profile picture even if you don't own a moonbirds. And then a lot of people were like, wait, what? Like we just thought, you know, we are spending, you know, 10K pop on these moonbirds because we want to use the license. But then they changed the license, right? So they changed mm -hmm. the terms and conditions. So that's, it's very centralized. I think that's, that's the part that is, that's a bit of a problematic. If there's a founder um, that's deciding for people, um, and and then you would think, okay, so what about DAOs, right? We have lots of DAOs, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, but um, are they decentralized? Like I'm actually doing a Twitter space this week about if, uh, and I'm bringing thirty DAOs. Like these are large DAOs that are out there. I'm just asking them. Uh, literally, the conversation is like are you guys actually decentralized? Because I believe they're not, right? And so now mm -hmm. like Bitcoin, for example, is decentralized, but do we have anything else in this industry on crypto and uh, Web3 in general that's decentralized? I don't know. So I think that that may be an issue. Um, and um, you, you're not having control over your own, um, I guess, strings of... Because at the end of the day, NFT is literally like a string of... Um, numbers and i guess characters that just points to a photo um, or image um, on the blockchain that's all that's literally what nft is so the technology is pretty simple um and it's complete it's very cool but how it's being used that we have challenges like the dApps that are coming through for us to be able to verify you have a specific nft or um and that's not uh, buggy that's not getting hacked easily. Like those are the technologies that um, we're still working on. I mean, we as in we, the industry, not us, so that in <laughs> Yeah. Especially, especially with what happened with um, FTX, I think people have a lot of mistrust with the new web industry are, and are kind of afraid of moving forward. And like I was saying earlier with my roommate, we were having a conversation. He's like, well, what if they shut it down at any time? I was like, I think they could, they'll shut it down, but to give them a second to, to catch up on education and then they'll it'll get turned back, turned back on, you know, just so they um, could figure out a way, a proper way to regulate it. And I was like, this, this FTX thing was actually good because now it shows now it shows like it's here to stay and like what can we use to make it better and how can we make it safe and for more transparency because we're every day we're moving more and more towards the digital world ever since um covid happened people a lot more people are starting to work at home and having online businesses so the internet and the web3 space 
needs to have more regulations in my opinion and for people to, and for a way for people to have trust in it and say okay well this is something that we can use and that we can make money off of for sure yeah yes yeah, certainly and um it's it's very interesting it's like how how soon is too soon for some of these um let's say even sam right to so sam uh Sanford uh, Bankman uh, to come up with a new project. Like let's say if he comes up with a new project um, tomorrow, is it too soon to invest? Um, or is it like, should we invest? Um, like there's literally one, um, I'm not going to name obviously, but there's one, uh, one uh, uh, fund that um, completely uh, quote unquote rugged in the sense that it went bankrupt and then, People were after them. No one could find them. And then now it's been a few months. Um, and then they came back. They're like, we want to launch a new exchange. And it's like, it's literally the conversation. So I'm in the conversation of the investors. Um, and then literally the investors were like, is this too soon? Or like, should we actually invest? Because we know they could do it. Like it could be actually profitable too to invest. But like they literally just went bankrupt with another project like mm -hmm. have and and this does so here's the challenge right so it's like it's not like so it's only five percent of the population that knows about crypto to begin five, five percent of human population knows about crypto so you can't you don't have a lot of choices at the end of the day so this is what when things get weird like if some of these even bad actors come back and say hey um we're gonna do something new like a lot of people are actually going to invest because they don't have other choices. Like who else going to do it, right? So like someone has to do it, right? So then if someone's done, maybe it was like mismanaged money or had poor business skills, it's still going to come back and just off, like literally just say, hey, we're going to do something else. And people are going to really consider it. Like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe we do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so so that's that's also a challenge. Uh, it's, it's the, ch the challenge is not so much of, um, us just sucking at like choosing. It's more like we don't have enough people in the crypto. So when people inside the crypto industry or NFT industry, they're attacking each other, they're calling self, uh, they're calling each other names and they're, they're not really seeing the big picture where it's like, actually the biggest problem is we need more people to enter the market, not so much of like going after um, each other and just say like you know p projects they tell like for example there are spaces people are literally sitting down for like hours and hours talking shit about like some other mm -hmm. project um, and then I'm like well okay so what does that accomplish you guys literally wasting wasting time precious time of yourself and your listeners um, you're not accomplishing anything new in fact if anything you're adding more problems because now that project is going to go down and then if that project had problems now they have more problems because of the fraud that you guys are increasing um and then someone's going to get hurt right someone on the like the public is going to get dumped on um and so so that's i think those are the real challenges we have um it's not so much of the technology it's like people inside the industry they're here for the wrong reasons a lot of the times um they're just they're just seeing like as you know as maybe as much into a future as like tomorrow um or like in next week not so much of like okay what are we trying to do like if if this is five percent and we can turn it into six percent by the end of this year what could that do like as a whole for everyone like i know for us it could mean a whole new world um mm -hmm. uh, where you know new projects coming in um, new businesses getting into this business so that could make a huge difference, right? But I think that those conversations are nowhere to be found um, online. The conversations are about a lot so much of like, oh, um, is this project rock? Is this project not rock? Um, is this cool? Like, is this not cool? Um, and then who is um, who has a like a dope who has a dope project that's that we can just go um and flip and just make a bunch of money? It's like cool right like you should like i think everyone who has the opportunity free market you should do that um, but it's like okay what about these other conversations where it's like okay what how do we get more people like that
let me answer that question. So this mm -hmm. is exactly why I started podcasting about mm -hmm. block take technology and NFTs is to inspire others to get involved in the industry and just try to innovate and make things a whole lot better and to, to tell the world, you know, like, Hey, this is something very special. And you just like, it's like something you don't realize yet until it actually happens. You're like, and then you'll be looking back and, and kicking yourself in the ass because you didn't get involved. You're just like, man, I could have been doing that. You know what I mean? So this is like the whole point is right now we're in the early days and you can do really well for yourself if you apply and try hard. And there's is like, I look at it as something very magical. You know what I mean? So, 100%. so yeah. what I mean, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I was just going to say like, even like, let's say 1924 ish, like when cars came out, right. Mm -hmm. So they were crashing, like they had troubles, but no one said like, okay, let's just like get rid of cars. Like cars are like scam. You know what I mean? Like that's that was in the conversation, right? They're like, okay, this is we see the function. Um, uh, let's fix it. Let's fix the problems. I think that's 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 where we should uh put our head into. Like that's where our mind should be on. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So what's next for your company? Like, is there anything you could share? Like any news that's about to happen? That could be like it's um you heard it first here on Crypto Kid podcast or is there things that you're waiting to put Absolutely. out? Absolutely, yeah. Of course, depends on when this is going to be aired. So we um we certainly have gone into the I want to say the huge focus on the technology side of things inside our incubator. So typically we either do like, you know, done for you or done with you services with where we take projects from an idea all the way to sell out. And again, that, that is sell out being majority of people's goals. Sometimes people just want to launch NFTs. That's not necessarily wanting them to sell out, but as a, uh, on average. So like we now gotten into a point of actually coming up with things like automating a lot of like processes like marketing right so now we have like ai right so we have mm -hmm. chat gpt so okay what does that look like for an nft project like what can you do as far as content creation for your project so you can stay on top of the mind for your um for your investors right so that's that's an area where we have actually already um, produced for example one example of it a twitter api uh, software where we can do a lot of the activities that usually a team member would do now um, with a robot. So now that's good and bad because sometimes people are going to abuse it. It's just going to become spammy, annoying, uh, but also it's good because certain things that um, you want to, let's say you get them, you want to get your message across or maybe there are certain things as far as content creation you want to do. Now you don't have to do it manually. You don't have to manage someone else doing it manually. You can still customize the hell out of it. In fact, with AI, you can customize even more than a, the usual human would do. Um, and that's exciting. So um, the the progression we have inside that technology, that's that's very exciting. I mean, we have already created things where we give it, literally give it to uh, people inside our incubator um, to use it and um, they they certainly benefiting uh, from from those perfect perfect and how can people find you like what are some some links and some uh, social media outlets that they could use to to be able to get connected with the community absolutely yeah so the website is sold out nfts uh, so s o l d nfts.io uh, so that's the website where they can see a lot of case studies like literally and the case studies i don't know what other agencies do sometimes they they don't really share they just say hey we had produced as much impression or we used like twitter we go into like 10 11 pages of details of, like what actually happened um, inside any marketing efforts we've done so that's that uh, we can people can see um, the on youtube the handle is nft marketing so this very simple NFT marketing. Um, they can find us. And then on uh, Twitter is um, Arvin K NFT. So A-R-V as in Victor, um, I-N, 
uh, NFT. Uh, so they can they can DM me. Um, usually either myself or someone from my team uh, replies there as well. Excellent, excellent. And those links will be in the description down below. Now, do you feel like there's anything that we didn't cover that you want to go over before we close or what's going on? No, this has been great. It's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, it's been an honor. And I really appreciate you coming out on the show. And hopefully I can meet up with you sometime and maybe have a coffee, Absolutely. tea, maybe a beer if you drink. And um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll see you around, Sounds dude. Good. Sounds good. See you around. Take Have it easy, one. man.